In this video, I'm actually going to be moving from InDesign to Adobe Illustrator briefly. So the reason for that is uh, I want to show you how you can bring in larger graphic images to do uh, maybe make borders out of them, maybe to make background graphics, that type of thing. Uh, and the reason for that is this. So in this example here, I have this large chandelier in the background and then this large deer silhouette that's sort of making up like a border on the side. So to do that, I can't simply bring in an image like this right here and stretch it out because it'll become extremely pixelated. So these are images from the internet. They're very small. You know, they're just a couple of inches. If I try to increase that, they're going to look very pixelated and, um, you know, very poor quality. So, you know, how do you take a small image and make it larger to put in the background and do this kind of thing? Well, all we have to do is take it into Illustrator and make it into a vector. So here I'm going to just open up Adobe Illustrator. This is another part of the Creative Suite and I'm going to open a new document to bring in one of those original JPEG images. So I'm going up to File and New and I'm just going to make a new document like I did in um, Photoshop for example, kind of like you do in InDesign. They're all very similar. So within InDesign, or Illustrator rather, I'm going to be making a new document roughly the size that I want it to be. Even bigger is fine. It's just that I want to make sure this image is as big as I need it to be. So my pages are 11 by 14, so I could certainly make this 11 by 14. Um, I know that, uh, you know, it'll be pretty close to proportions of like that deer silhouette and the chandelier aren't really in keeping with that. So I might make mine like 12 by 12, for example. So I can just type those in. I can make these, you know, any size that I want them to be. It really doesn't matter. So they're 15 by 15 would be fine. I just want to get it roughly the right size. And then I'll say, okay. When I do that, Illustrator's opening up this blank piece of paper basically and Illustrator is a fantastic program we could be doing a lot of stuff in here but right now we're just going to be using it to bring in an image and do an image trace so I'm essentially going to be ignoring everything on the left side of the screen we're not going to be getting into that right now so what I'll do is go to file in place like we've done before and I'm going to grab that image uh, of my deer silhouette that I was using in my portfolio. So this is the actual piece of art, if you will, that I used as an example on the bottom of the page. I could have done some editing to it before I brought it into Illustrator, you know, if I wanted to trim away the background or anything like that, but I think that this will work just fine. So notice when you bring it into Illustrator, it has a frame around it just like it does in InDesign. That's good. So that means it's selected. If I clicked away from it, for example, I thought, oh no, all I have to do is with my black arrow, just click on it again to make it active. So when you have an image, a pixelated image, like a JPEG or a PSD or anything like that, you will have the option at the top of the screen to do an image trace. So the down and dirty of what we're doing is we're taking a pixelated image, a raster based image, which is what you're doing when you take a photograph, when you're in Photoshop, and we're going to make it a vector, which is a, a mathematically uh, derived image. So a, a raster image, a pixel image, can only really be this size or smaller. If I try to make it a lot bigger, it's going to lose image quality. It's going to get very, very pixelated and look bad. So we're going to be making this a vector. So with it selected, I'm going to click Image Trace at the top of the screen. When I do that, Illustrator is going to think for a second and give me the result. Now the result I get here is actually what I'm going for, but you do have the option to change it. So we have the tracing result right here. On the left of that word, there's this little button and it's a, a menu, a panel to come in and change characteristics about how this traces. So it defaults at black and white, but we could actually be making this grayscale or color if we wanted to. So I'll just change that to color so you can see. So, you know, for my purposes, I want this very graphic black and white image, but you might want something different. You know, if you had scanned in a a uh, pattern for a wallpaper fabric and you want to make it a lot bigger, you might be wanting to do color. 
If you do, you have many options in determining the amount of colors and so on. To keep it simple, I'm just going to change it to black and white again. And then notice here as well, under advanced, you can change the threshold, um, the corners, the noise, and many, many things about it that once again, I'm not going to be getting into right now, but be aware that you can go in and play with this. I'm just going to close that menu. So, you know, now I'm happy with this. I really like where this is going. What I'm going to do now is just grab these corners and hold down the shift key and stretch this out so it fits my page a little bit better. Okay. Maybe I'll get something like this. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is a file and a save. I'm going to save this image here. So I'll call this one you know, Deer 2, for example. And this is an Adobe Illustrator file in AI. So I'm going to save that. We have a bunch of options here. We can actually back save this if you have a previous version. Uh, but you know, I think this looks fine. And I'll just say OK. You can actually open up Illustrator files in InDesign. So I could actually open this up directly in InDesign if I wanted to. But I would actually like to export this and just take it into Photoshop. So what I'll do is a file and an export. And what I can do here now is pick whether I'm going to be doing like a JPEG, for example, a PNG, a Photoshop file, and that's what I want to pick. So I'll be taking this from Illustrator to Photoshop. I will do a save. And then it will give me options here if I want to do CMYK or RGB. I might actually change that to RGB. Then I will have resolution options. I will pick high here. I could do a lot of things in terms of saving layers or not. I really only have this one image, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And right now I'll say OK. And it will write the Photoshop file. Like I said, I could be taking this directly from Illustrator to InDesign, but sometimes there's a kind of weird issues with the color and whatnot. And I actually just want to show you the process of taking it to Photoshop and what that looks like. So now I'm going to open up Photoshop. And what we want to do is get to something like this. I just wanted to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to do a file and open. And we'll open up the Deer 2 file. It's this one right here. So it looks like this. So I just wanted to come in and, you know, crop this a little bit which I, once again, could have done in Illustrator, but at this point, I think we're all pretty comfortable with Photoshop, so it's a nice way to do it. Enter. And then I could come in and use my magic wand, select all that white, and then do an edit, cut, to remove that background. Now I happen to know that even though I just did that, I'll probably have some dirty edges around here. So I'll just go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and I'm just going to drag the saturation all the way down, or the lightness rather, all the way down, just to make sure that's nice and black. And I'll say OK. Now I can do a File, and I will do a Save. I'll minimize this and this, and I'll come back to my InDesign file. So I'm just going to delete this deer that I had here, move that text over, and I'm going to bring that in. So I will do a file and a place, and I'll bring in my deer silhouette. And I will nudge that into place where I like it. Now I can definitely uh, change the size. So up at the top I'm going to say Auto Fit so that it adjusts when I adjust the frame. I'm going to hold down the Shift key and you know tweak the size a little bit. Okay. 
And I can use my arrow keys to just nudge that around. Okay, so I think this happens to look pretty good. Now I can do the same process for the chandelier and bring that in. 